So what you've just seen with the warm up is something that I use to help me with my footwork. as I move around. So, one of the things that you seek when you're looking for what the Chinese who invented this little thing called soccer, football around the world, is what were they doing other than entertaining themselves? They were troops. They were probably carrying arms. And they were kind of savage. So you had to put some rules together. And in that, I can tell you, the footwork and removing the hands necessitates some unique balance that can be found in fighting. Sword play, you didn't have time to go to the ground. If you got caught in the rush, you got stomped on. Guys aren't waiting for you. So in their day, you had, to, you had to stay on your feet, you had to keep moving. So you have to keep things within context. Well, in soccer, if you're on the ground and you're not moving, you're out of the game. You're kind of dead to the team. So one of the things that soccer players have that I find interesting is like this natural ability when it comes to understanding things like range and distance. But look, as I move with the soccer ball right now, I'm sort of like not mindful of that. Oh, and bag that everybody used, and, and in the sport of boxing has been around for a while, everybody would stand and they would do their combinations and move their heads. So that was good. But, but because of the way they were positioned in gyms and all that, they had no real world context. So when I started getting into this world, Man, I tell you, I saw what they were doing and I just sort of abandoned it because I could see where they weren't working around like I saw pro boxers and pro soccer players do. This thing is designed to move independently. You see those two centers? So if you don't have your hands up in the right spot, when a person's coming in, you're gonna catch a knee. You see this? So we're all taught how to, oh, boom. Get our hands up, answer that phone. Seems fairly protected, guy coming in. If I have my left foot forward, you know, orthodox, again, same thing. So I'm gonna keep that uh, thing. See, I've got it covered there, but not there, on the hip, not there. So those accidental things over the course of a fight, well, dude, put that into context. Get out of the MMA, get out of the rules, get out from just anything. That guy's got a knife. What just hit you there is a stick. Oh, fuck. St it's, it has deadly consequence. You're not in the ring. If you're gonna be in the ring, you still have to learn this, and you should. I'm not teaching ring fighting. This is not designed for ring fighting. This is designed for my style of mantis that I've incorporated. So I like to keep, when I'm inside, my elbows fairly tight to my body because when strikes come in at this range, yet, they hurt. Plus, they give advantage to somebody trying to, to get inside to take you down. And you always want your elbows in so you can get in and wrap and take these, these underhook positions. Back in the 90s when I started this, Mantis said, hey, when I say Mantis, I mean the, the ethos of the training system suggests that if you're going to become a Mantis practitioner, you should become a master of grappling and grabbing. That's what they imitate in those ridiculous forms that we were all taught. Bam, that I won gold medals with. Okay, anyway, so back to what I was saying since I lost my train of thought. See, it becomes all about me and the gold medal. You're not about a gold medal. You're about a person that's trying to understand the intricacies of maybe fighting, soccer, or physical training in the mindset of this. So in that, I've created this channel. But for my own personal training, I created this bag. And I use it with the soccer ball very often. So and the reason for that is with a soccer ball, what the bag allows you to do 
is to move in sort of a realistic fashion. So whoop, whoop, I can begin to use these exercises so that the, the bag becomes my opponent. It becomes more real. Just like when I'm fighting, whether I'm practicing with my right side forward or, or left side forward, it doesn't matter because I'm still confronted by the same set of circumstances. This guy's got arms and legs, and he's going to move in ways that are, that are relatively unpredictable. And if I have my hands up, like traditional boxing suggests, I'm going to get kicked a lot. Especially if I'm fighting me, you know, because guys like me like that shit. We like to kick. So the, the bag itself, then, is a thing that in soccer can be used, but in fighting can be used. And it becomes a targeting device as well as a reminder of your ranges. On my workout floor, I've kind of labeled the ranges in stars or lotus blossoms. Or whatever the hell you think this is. I don't know. Anyway. Traditional Kung Fu suggests that you become very, very good at that which you're about to do. So one of the things that Mantis did was it stayed low as well. When you're my size, and now I'm 5'7", you need to kick in the head. Easy. Easy to kick in the head. So you have to be defensive to that. I've designed my floor with a relative reach longer than the one that I have. At no time when I circle my ring can I touch my bag. Just can't be done. I have to use footwork. I've also designed my floor such that I can imagine that it is raised at this size. It's, it's a pretty small floor. But imagine that it's raised up in the air such that if you step over the edge, you're dead. This bag is very DIY. I'll show some demonstration videos of me using it with more technique and things that are designed for my style of, of fighting, or any style of fighting for that matter. So there you go. That's how I use my double end bag in both the sport of soccer as well as my own practice of Kung Fu. Thanks for watching.